and fosters ethical and social responsibility. If you are a visitor, either on site or online, we are glad you are with us and we invite you to stay after the service to get acquainted. We welcome your questions and look forward to getting to know you. I call your attention to the announcements in your order of service and weekly email. There you'll find more information about the following. Today after the service is our annual meeting. All are welcome to attend. Members of good standing are eligible to vote. Please join us for this important work of the congregation. On June 10th, Story Circle starts at noon at the UUFN building with Paul Krauss leading for ages 10 and up. Our garden team is looking for help. We are in need of volunteers on Fridays to help water the beautiful garden that you have seen there around our Unitarian Universalist sign. Next Sunday, join us for Becoming a Force for Peace, presented by Nita Wolf. Nita will lead this service along with John Bushnell, a guest from the Minneapolis Sufi group. Please consider staying right after the service to experience peace in action by exploring the dances of universal peace. Again, welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Northfield. Good morning, all. I am the Reverend Sarah Smalley. I use she, her pronouns, and I serve this congregation as its minister. We gather today for our annual flower ceremony, a ritual that celebrates the blessings of being part of a community while honoring each individual's beauty. 
Many of you brought flowers today. If you need to bring yours up, you can still add them to our bouquet, uh, bouquets up front. Many of you brought flowers today and added them to these bouquets, a symbol of freely sharing your gifts with others. Near the end of the service, we will bless these flowers and each person will receive one to take home with them, a symbol of how we are in turn blessed by this community. Some of you may be visiting for the first time today or did not know about flower ceremony. Though some have come without a flower, some have brought extras. I laughed to myself that my anxiety this morning is we wouldn't have enough and we have an abundance of beauty and an abundance of gifts here. So everyone is welcome uh, and invited to partake in this special ritual later. This is the grace of community. When we show up for each other, there is always enough. And so as we gather, our opening words are Mysteries, Yes, by Mary Oliver. Truly, we live with mysteries too marvelous to be understood. How grass can be nourishing and the mouths of lambs, how rivers and stones are forever in allegiance with gravity, while we ourselves dream of rising. How two hands touch and the bonds will never be broken. How people come from delight or the scars of damage to the comfort of a poem. Let me keep my distance always from those who think they have the answers. Let me keep my company always with those who say look and laugh in astonishment and bow their heads. Today, we gather to say look and laugh in astonishment and bow our heads. Come, let us worship together. The flaming chalice is the symbol of Unitarian Universalism, a beacon of truth, light, and warmth. Each Sunday when we gather, we bring the symbol of life together. Please join with me in speaking the words for the lighting of the chalice. Let us open our eyes to see what is beautiful. Let us open our minds to learn what is true. Let us open our hearts to love one another. Please rise and body your spirit for our opening song, number 21, For the Beauty of the Earth.
Our theme for this month of June is the path of delight. That means that today we declare the truth that the spiritual path does not always have to be somber. There is a time for silence and a time for reverence. There is a time for lament and a time for rage. And there is also, if we allow it, plenty of time for delight. Last week, I was at the spring orchestra concert for my son's school. This was no ordinary concert. Instead of being in a stuffy high school theater, it was outside at a park amphitheater on a perfect spring night with bird song filling the air between songs. Instead of Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, they played Dancing in the Moonlight by Van Morrison. Instead of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, they played Adele Delightful. There was a moment during the concert when the orchestra was playing Taylor Swift's Wildest Dreams. When I looked over to a group of orchestra students off stage who weren't a part of the performance of that particular song, there they were in their tuxedos and ball gowns and sunglasses, standing in a circle, dancing and singing along to the song in sign language, Wildest Dreams, with the music of violins soaring in the background. If I hadn't already been thinking ahead to this month's theme, my go-to would have been to label that moment of, as one of beauty, and it was. It was beautiful in all the ways. But to label it as a moment of delight, to allow myself that moment of delight felt different. Beauty feels like a breath of awareness that fills and expands your heart. Last month's theme of creativity feels like a spark and a longing. But delight, delight feels like freedom, like the corners of your mouth and the edges of your spirit lifting. Today's flower ceremony is all of the above. It is the very breath of beauty, the embodiment of creativity, a gift of delight. I'll tell the full story later in this service about the history of the flower ceremony, which includes the reality of Nazi Germany. Delight and terror coexisted then as they do now. We need to look no further than Pride Month. Rainbows, love, glitter, dancing, joy, freedom, and protesters and lawmakers spouting hatred, fear, damnation, and condemnation. The first Pride Parade commemorated the Stonewall Riots, where gay men and lesbian women and queer people fought back against the New York Police Department. When the police aggressively dragged patrons and employees out of the Stonewall Inn in Manhattan for no other reason than they were not straight, several people fought back. A crowd gathered on the streets, things escalated. For six days, people protested and clashed violently with the New York police. And by the time the Stonewall riots ended on July 2nd, 1969, the gay rights movement went from being a fringe issue largely ignored by politicians and the media to front page news worldwide. Fascism, oppression, and fear are a part of the human experience. And in the face of that, pride rainbows shine, flowers bloom, community forms. It is an honor and a delight to journey together. As we move into our time of joys and sorrows, I invite you to breathe that all in, the fear in the world and the delight in this room and in your life. I invite you to take an unhurried breath and know this moment as sacred.
In the presence of a love that holds all, we use our chalice flame to light our candles of community. We light our first candle as a blessing for the wider world. This candle is for all of the children, youth, young adults, adults and elders at Northfield Pride yesterday with their rainbow fishnet stockings and by flags draped around their shoulders and for all of the glitter and kindness and dancing. And this candle is also for those whose spirits long to be out, but whose reality demands they stay hidden. Their glitter hearts still shine. We know too that the details of our daily lives are sacred and important. We now light a candle for all of the simple joys that are sustaining us. And we light another candle in honor of the sorrows and hardships we may be carrying. Joys and sorrows we carry in our hearts, but that have not been spoken aloud. And we move into a time of shared silence. May the truth of your heart be reflected in these flames. Amen and blessed be. Our reading today is For the Flowers Have the Gift of Language by the UU minister and author Richard Gilbert. Speak, flowers, speak. Why do you say nothing? The flowers have the gift of language. In the meadow, they speak of freedom, creating patterns wild and free as no gardener could match. In the forest, they nestle snug carpets under the roof of leaf and branch, making a rug of such softness. At end tip of branches, they cling briefly before bursting into fruit sweet to taste. Flowers, can you not speak joy to our sadness and hope to our fear? Can you not say how it is with you that you color the darkest corner? The flowers have the gift of language. At the occasion of birth, they are buds before bursting. At the ceremony of love, they unite two lovers in beauty. At the occasion of death, they remind us how lovely is life. Oh, would that you had a voice, silent messengers of hope. Would that you could tell us how you feel arrayed in such beauty. The flowers have the gift of language. In the dark depths of a death camp, they speak the light of love, of li the light of life. In the face of cruelty, they speak of courage. In the experience of ugliness, they bespeak the persistence of beauty. Speak, messengers, speak, for we would hear your message. 
Speak, messenger, speak, for we need to hear what you would say. For the flowers have the gift of language. They transport the human voice on winds of beauty. They lift the melody of song to our ears. They paint through the eye and hand of the artist. Their fragrance binds us to sweet smelling earth. May the blessing of the flowers be upon you. May their beauty beckon to you each morning and their loveliness lure you each day and their tenderness caress you each night. May their delicate petals make you gentle and their eyes make you aware. May their stems make you sturdy and their reaching make you care. We will now take our morning offering. This month, we are honored to donate to Northfield Pride. Northfield Pride organizes Pride in the Park, which is a joyful celebration of all forms of love in all genders. This year, Northfield Pride also established a scholarship for a graduating LGBTQ plus high school senior. Our generous donations today are a tangible way we help to make Northfield a safer, more supportive, more joyful home for people of all sexualities and genders. You may donate by cash check made out to UUFN with offering basket in the memo line or online from our website, UUNorthfield. Org. You can scroll down to the bottom of the homepage for the link. We now gratefully accept the offering. Today, we listen to the flowers and notice what is blooming. The flowers, Richard Gilbert says, have the gift of language. They speak of courage in the experience of ugliness. They bespeak the persistence of beauty. Speak, messengers, speak, for we would hear your message. Speak, messengers, speak, for we need to hear what you would say. Today, we listen to the flowers and notice what is blooming. The seeds have been planted long ago, a hundred years ago this month. A Unitarian minister named Norbert Chopik presided over the first flower ceremony in Prague, Czechoslovakia. Here's the story. It's a good story. <laughs> starting with Norbert's conversion to Unitarianism that many of us may be able to relate to. Norbert's mother was a devout Catholic. His father was agnostic. He became an acolyte at age 10 in 1890, but in the years that followed, he became disillusioned with the Catholic Church. At 18, Norbert Chopik discovered the Baptists and became a minister. He founded almost a dozen churches from Ukraine to Budapest. And yet slowly, his faith became more and more liberal. 
He left Bohemia under government threat and accepted a call to serve a Baptist church in New York City until one day in 1919. That day, he wrote in his diary, quote, I cannot be a Baptist anymore, even in compromise. The fire of new desires, new worlds is burning inside me. And so he became Unitarian. But first, he met his wife, Maya Chopek. They joined a Unitarian church in New Jersey in 1921, and they joined because they sent their older children out to check out the religious education program in a number of different churches. They liked the Unitarian ones best. And so Norbert and Maya researched this religion of Unitarianism and decided that they, in his words, had found their not only clear heads, but warm hearts too. That is the power of our open-hearted approach to Sunday school. World War I ended. Norbert's home country now independent, he and Maya returned to Czechoslovakia and founded the Unitarian Church there. He introduced the flower ceremony in June of 1923. For some time, he had felt the need for some symbolic ritual that would bind people more closely together, but the format had to be one that would not alienate any who had forsaken other religions. So he turned to the native beauty of their countryside for elements of a communion-like service, which would be genuine to them. The simple yet profound ritual of flower ceremony was the result individual flowers gathered together and then redistributed to carry that beauty out into the world. It was such a success that it was held yearly. In just 20 years, Chopik's church, the Prague Liberal Religious Fellowship, grew to over 3,000 members. Clearly, Norbert was a visionary leader. His was a bold church, a church thinking beyond its doors, beyond what it thought possible. It was a church that was willing to take risks, to make tough decisions, to bear disappointment, and to build a new way, first by building a church, and then that church could build up the world. That was Chopek's church, but it is also our church. When the Nazis took control of Prague in 1940, Chopek's church started holding services twice a week on Sundays and Tuesdays, drawing increasing numbers of worshipers in that time of oppression. Soon the Nazis found Reverend Chopek's gospel of the inherent worth of every person to be, as Nazi court records show, quote, too dangerous to the Reich for him to be allowed to live. In 1941, Chopik was arrested, tried for treason in German courts, and sent to Dachau concentration camp. Even in starvation, he held a flower ceremony with his fellow prisoners, finding whatever flowers they could among the weeds of Dachau. The Nazis killed Norbert Chopek, but his spirit, courage, and commitment live on today. Those qualities have passed on to us to make them real. Maya, Norbert's wife, was also a visionary Unitarian leader in her own right. She was ordained a Unitarian minister in 1926. As World War II began, Maya returned to the United States in 1939 on a speaking tour to raise support for the refugee programs in Czechoslovakia. She was unable to return to Europe due to the expansion of Nazi Germany's control there and did not learn of her husband's death until the war was over. In 1940, she brought the flower ceremony to the Unitarian Church of Cambridge, Massachusetts. It is Maya that planted the seeds of this ritual on this soil. 
What we are about to do here today is not a historical reenactment of something over and done, but an affirmation of our continuity with generations of people struggling for ever-widening liberty. Generations of people claiming delight even in the face of fear. Because this flower ceremony, lovely though it is, isn't a diversion from ugly reality, but a gentle fierceness, which proclaims that in the midst of ominous times, delight is our birthright. Today, we celebrate this ritual of diversity and joy. As Chapek asked his people to bring a flower and celebrate beauty, so shall we. We shall hear the original words of Chapek, connecting to generations of Unitarians, Universalists, and Unitarian Universalists who never gave up on the beauty of this world. We shall listen to what the flowers have to speak, not just any flowers, but these flowers, this beauty, in this moment, in this community, with these people. Soon we will bless these flowers as a community, but first let me explain how this ritual will work. For those in the sanctuary, after we have blessed the flowers, you will be invited to come forward in two lines. Again, there is an abundance of flowers for everyone here, whether you brought one or not. When you arrive at the vases, this is not a time for consumer culture to kick in where you tried to nab the best flower for yourself. <laughs> That's not what church is about. Instead, you will offer and receive the gift of delight. You will offer, you will choose a flower for the person in line, in line behind you and gift it to them. They will receive the flower and say thank you, hold on to it, and then choose another flower for the person behind them, and so on. In this way, we embody the truth that in this community, community you offer gifts and you receive unexpected gifts from others, and we get to practice the spiritual practice of expressing gratitude to one another. For those on Zoom, during the ceremony, Mary Jane will choose a flower for you all and we will put it here near our chalice, a sign that you are held in this sacred space with us. If you have a flower at home with you, later in the ceremony, you're welcome to hold it up to your camera to show its beauty to others online. So let us now bless these flowers. To consecrate, means simply to declare something as sacred. We now declare these flowers are sacred. With the same words Dr. Chapek used to consecrate flowers when he conducted his ceremony in Prague 100 years ago. To lead this blessing this year, the current minister of the Prague Unitarian Church recorded Chopik's words to be used in Unitarian and Unitarian Universalist congregations across the globe today. This is Reverend Dr. Peter Samoyski. Let me share with you the meditation which Norbert Fabian Chapek offered for flower communion. In the name of providence, which implants in the seed the future of the flower, and in our hearts the longing for people to live in harmony. In the name of the highest in whom we move and who makes the mother and father, the brother and sister, lover and loner for what they are. In the name of sages and great religious leaders who sacrificed their lives to hasten the coming of the age of mutual respect, let us renew our resolution sincerely to be real brothers and sisters 
regardless of any kind of bar which estranges us from each other. In this holy resolve may we be strengthened knowing that we are God's family, that one spirit, the spirit of love, unites us, and endeavor for more a perfect and more joyful life. life. Amen. Amen. With our flowers now blessed, let us say together the words of Reverend Maya Chapek, as shown on the screen, as we dedicate ourselves to the task of building beloved community. Please join with me. Organized and growing into a true community, Hello. we are ready to serve one another, the nation, and the world. By exchanging flowers, we signify that we are willing. <laughs> Y'all, this is the important part, too. All right, I'm going to say it, and you're just going to say amen. You're, it's going to be good. You're going to say amen. By exchanging flowers, oh, by, that we are willing, in the spirit of tolerance and patience, to march together in search of truth, disregarding all that usually divides humankind. May it be so, amen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it is now time for us to share in our flower ceremony. Mary Jane, will you choose a flower for those on Zoom? Dear ones on Zoom, we offer this beauty to you and place it by our chalice flame. In the sanctuary, you are now invited to come forward in two lines and with delight, choose a flower for the person behind you in line and offer it to, the, to them. They will accept it, express their gratitude for this gift, and then offer another flower to the next person. Let our flower ceremony begin.
all are beautiful. <laughs> that was so lovely to witness. We now, holding on to our flowers and knowing the gift that they are and the delight that they bring, I invite you to rise in body or spirit for our closing hymn, Come Sing a Song With Me. Feel free to sway along. You may be seated. Our annual meeting today will start at 11 o'clock, so you will have some time to uh, grab some coffee, and then we will start our meeting um, in about 10 minutes, a little bit more than 10 minutes. Um, on this day, when we celebrate the beauty of diversity, the abundance of community, and the delight of Pride Month, these closing words are from Reverend Diana Smith, very slightly adapted. Fearless beloveds, the same particles that make the stars have formed you, you shine with stardust for the entire world to see your beauty. You are a bearer of the divine and holy unto yourself, given life to live expansively and lusciously. Even though the powers of life can be rascally and stubborn, even amid destructive and oppressive systems, together we can practice hope and courageous love. So go on, beloveds. Go forth to shimmer and shine like the beautiful cosmic stardust that makes you perfect just as you are. And let's show the world what love looks like. May it be so, amen. We join together in the words for the extinguishing of the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Please rise and body your spirit with your hand over your heart holding the hand of those next to you or whatever posture is most comfortable for you, we sing words of blessing one to another.
Go in peace. Amen.